The Writing on the Wall, Daniel 5. God had allowed his people, the Jews, to be attacked by another country because of their sin. Prince Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Judah and took their smartest people captive. Daniel was one of those captives. Eight years later, Nebuchadnezzar returned and took the temple treasures and part of the royal family back to Babylon. Eleven years after his second invasion, Nebuchadnezzar returned and destroyed Jerusalem and the temple and took most of the Jews back to Babylon. Daniel studied the Babylonian language and laws and many other subjects. He served in the king's palace in Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar eventually died. Five kings ruled after him. Belshazzar was the last Babylonian king to rule in Babylon. Belshazzar hosted a party for 1,000 of his officials. He ordered his servants to bring the gold and silver cups Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple in Jerusalem 58 years earlier. As they drank from the cups stolen from God's house, they praised their false idols made out of gold and silver, bronze and iron, and wood and stone. They believed their gods had helped them conquer the Jews. Suddenly, a hand appeared and began writing on the wall. The king watched in great fear as the hand wrote a message to him that he did not understand. Belshazzar was so scared that his knees were knocking together. The king called in his wise men and said, I will reward anyone who can explain this message to me. I will give him purple robes and a gold chain to wear. I will even appoint him to the third highest position in the kingdom after my father and me. None of the wise men could give the meaning of the writing. The words on the wall confused them. Now Belshazzar was even more afraid. The queen heard the commotion and came to the banquet room. O oh, king, may you live forever. Don't be afraid. I know a man who has the spirit of the holy God in him. He interpreted dreams for King Nebuchadnezzar. His name is Daniel. Call for him and he will tell you what the message means. The king's men found Daniel and brought him to the banquet room. The king made the same promise to Daniel that he had made to the other wise men. Daniel would be the third highest ruler in Babylon and receive the robes and gold chain if he could read and explain the writing. Daniel said to the king, I don't need your gifts. Keep them or give them to someone else. I will interpret the writing without reward. Daniel began telling Belshazzar about Nebuchadnezzar's power and great wealth. All the nations were afraid of him and his mighty army. One day, Nebuchadnezzar gave himself credit for all his power and wealth. God was not pleased with Nebuchadnezzar's pride. God took away the king's power and made him think he was an animal. For years, the king lived outdoors and ate grass like an ox until finally he gave credit to God for his wealth and power. He had learned that the Most High God gives kingdoms to whomever he wishes, but he can also take them away. Belshazzar knew what had happened to Nebuchadnezzar, but it didn't keep Belshazzar from thinking he was something special. He gave praise to gods who are not real. He should have humbled himself and given praise to God, the one who had the power over his life, even his ability to breathe. Daniel read the words on the wall and gave their meanings. The word mini means God has determined your kingdom's end. The word tekel means you have been weighed in the balances and have been found wanting. The word pires means your kingdom has already been divided between the Medes and the Persians. This was not good news. Belshazzar's worst fears were about to come true. Even so, his servants put a purple robe on Daniel and a gold chain around his neck. Belshazzar appointed Daniel as the third highest ruler in the kingdom. That very same night, Belshazzar was killed by the Medes and the Persians who had surrounded Babylon while Belshazzar partied. They marched into the city and took over the Babylonian kingdom. A Mede named Darius became the new king. King Darius liked Daniel and made him one of the top rulers in his new kingdom. The account of the handwriting on the wall teaches us that God has power over all rulers on earth. It also teaches us to humble ourselves before God and to praise Him rather than ourselves. God alone is worthy of our praise. His power is limitless and all His ways are perfect.